Hello there dear friends. So in this video, I'll be walking you guys through on how to actually fetch those data that we have listed out inside our Trapi CMS and we're just going to be making sure we are able to call those particular data that are be that we have listed inside strapi.cms. So in that, that way we are able to make sure that that we have fetched all the data and we're just going to be displaying it in this form like it's going to be a list of blocks like this so that they are actually coming directly from Strapi. So let's do that. So first of all, let's make sure we actually set up uh, the, let's create some content. Yeah, let's host some content inside our Trapi. So in this case, let's let's uh, open a new uh, PowerShell in this case here. I have like open a new one here. Like this is case, I just open a new PowerShell uh, terminal here. So in our second PowerShell terminal here, we're just going to be uh, pointing this particular uh, directory to our Strapi. So in this case, I have to change the directory to, uh, sorry, in this, this case, I have to say CD uh, source and just need to make sure that you point this particular folder called Strapi here. So in this case, Strapi CD, Strapi like this. Okay. So next thing we should be doing is that we need to be making, we need to run that particular Strapi CMS. So in this case, I will say npm run develop like this and I have to make it to the side here. So let's click on this particular localhost 1337 uh, admin. You'll be directed to your Strapi DMS uh, project server. So in this case, I already have my credentials here. I'm just going to click on login. And once you have login, you should be going to your content manager. Okay. So once your content manager has been loaded, as you can see here, we happen to have, uh, we already have listed some some collection called blocks here. These are the blocks that we have listed in our previous uh, setting up. While we, while we were setting up the strappy so in this case we need to make sure that we must be able to add some data inside our uh, blocks collection so in this case i have to create a new entry so let's create a new block called uh, let's gonna say a simple uh, dummy block name so in this case this is block one so i'm just copying this and pasting it inside description and pasting it here and content as well and of course for cover image i'll be making sure i'll be adding some uh, other cover images And there you go. Now I already added a cover image that I already like selected. So let's click on save. And it has already been saved. The next thing is to do is need to make sure that you have already published your content also. Just, just to click on publish button while you also click on save. Now your content has been published. Now let's go to the next part, which is to make sure that your content is accessible. Let's go to settings here. And of course, let's go to roles here. I mean, this roles here. This is the second role. And make sure that we are in public here. Just click on edit your public options. So you need to make sure that permission only actions bound by the route are listed below. So as you can see, we need to make sure uh, we are all of this are selected inside blocks here. So in this case, I've already selected all of them. So just need to make sure all of this are selected. So to, you are able to then only you are able to access your data from via API. So let's click on let's click on save here. And once the role has been edited, let's go to our let's open a new tab here. So this case I have to call a I would like to test that particular API that we have just created, which is the Strapi, the data that's going to be coming from blocks uh, collection. So in this case, I have to say HTTP followed by colon double slash localhost, and it's going to be one double three seven, and this the full and one double three seven followed by API slash blocks, and there you go. Now you are. API is still running here. So uh, once you are, so as you can see here now, you're able to act, use this particular API URL to actually call your just data in the form of API. And let's go to our React project here. And we're going to be making sure we create, we're going to be creating a function just to fetch that data that's coming from this particular URL. So in this case, we're going to be using a hook where we're going to be, uh, yeah, we're just going to be creating a new folder. In this case, let's go to source folder and create a new folder called hooks okay inside the hooks folder i'll be creating a new file called use fetch.js okay and inside use fetch.js is where we're going to be creating a function to fetch that data so in this case i'll, I'll create a function component template in this case i'll, I'll call rafce and it's going to be called use fetch like this and of course we, we're going to be importing uh, not react but in this case we'll be using use effect and use use state hooks in this case so that's that's, that's what we're going to be using right now 
So the next thing we'll be doing is that once we are able to uh, import both of this, we need to make sure that we are actually going to be using, uh, we need to like create some states first. So there'll be three states to actually to gather the fetch, to, to fetch the data. For the first state, it's going to be called uh, const. We need to make sure we declare the, the state. So this, the first state is going to be called state data. So we're going to be making sure that we are able to set data like this and make sure, make sure we use uh, use state function. Okay, something like this. And initially, it's going to be uh, null like this. And of course, let's let's create something like this. And it's going to be using the same template. I'll be pasting it at the bottom here. Second time, second thing is going to be called error. So just to, just to track what kind of error is it uh, is it imposed so that we're able to easily uh, solve it. And just going to be leaving this as null as well. And the third thing is going to be uh, let's say let's say it's going to be the it's going to be loading call loading. So it's just to make sure that when when your data is loading, this is going to be running as well. This is going to be true as well. So in this case, this case is going to be in loading, set loading, use state is going to be uh, true. Okay, so that's how I'll be using. Okay, so the next thing I'll be doing here, I'll be, I'll be making making use of this use effect uh, code here. So in this case, I'll be use use effect. And I'll be choosing this use effect snippet here to get started easily. So this so that, I mean, I won't be needing any of this. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to remove this and it's going to remove this thing as well. So just to, to make it empty as possible like this. But then inside this use effect here, I'll be making sure I'll be creating a function called const fetch data. Fetch data equals to async. It's going to be an async function and it's going to be an arrow function here as well. And this arrow function will be having a curly braces like this. So this is where we will be placing the, the steps to actually fetch the data. So the first step is to make sure we actually set loading. So set loading will be the one that comes first. So we need to make sure set loading is true. And the next thing, after it starts loading, we need to be having, we need to have a try catch code block like this. So just create a try catch code block like this. So in this, in this template will be, the first thing that we're using is, uh, we, need to be, we need to be like fetching the data in the form of a response. So in this case, it's going to be calling const uh, called rest. So rest is where we can, it's like basically the response that's coming from this uh, await uh, fetch function. So fetch function is where, we, where we'll be placing the, the URL, the URL of this, basically in this case, it's going to be this URL here. And once that particular fetch function has already fetched this particular URL, it will be stored inside response. But it is not yet to be used. So that's why we'll be using uh, a JSON destructuring method to in order to make sure that we destructure that particular response in the form of uh, JSON format. That's why we'll be using the second uh, variable called JSON. Await res.json. Just to make sure that you are, your response are destructured into JSON format. So in that way, we are able to make use of it. And the next thing is you need to make sure whatever JSON JSON data that we have that we have gathered, we need to be storing it inside our our set data uh, function, so that we are able to call data instantly. So that's what we'll be doing. So in this case, I'm calling JSON. And of course, let's say if there's we have already completed our steps, so we just need to say set loading going to be false. Okay, so that's the first step to to if you are able to find the data. And that's also that if you find an error here, so we need to make sure that set error just need to you just need to like set the error whatever error that's coming from uh, that's coming from the response here and the next thing is of course we need to be set loading as well set loading will be false also because we have already completed this step and the next thing is we need to make sure that we actually need to run this particular fetch data here so we're just going to call this set fetch data function and right after right after this particular curly braces here this be placing fetch data function here and of course, this particular URL here is it's also going to be coming from as a parameter. So that's how I'll be using copying this URL and I'll be pasting it right here. Okay. So, and that's it. And before, let me, before, before forgetting, I need to make sure that we are able to export uh, whatever that we actually are, you, we are doing inside here. So in this case, I'll have to call return and going to be placing the, the, the three states, which are loading, followed by error, followed by data. So this, this three states are the one that we'll be using in our on our entire project, so that's what we I'll need to return this file, and yeah, that's it. This is how we should be making sure that we are able to fetch those data. And let's go to our main app.jsx to make sure that we are able to just to just to test are we able to uh, fetch this data inside our project. So let's create, let's click on save all, and let's close this, and let's go to our app.jsx and let's import use fetch. This use fetch is coming from slash 
dot slash hooks slash use fetch. Okay, this is how we should be calling this. So once we have already uh, imported use fetch, the next thing we should make sure we are able it's like actually running. So let's go to our app.css and let's call the three states that are coming from use fetch, which are loading, followed by data, followed by error. So these three states are going to be, uh, be of course, going to be use fetch, equating to use fetch like this. And this inside use fetch is where we will be placing the URL of our API that we are, that's working. This in this case, I like to place copy this by the way, and I'll be pasting it inside here. And once I paste it here, it is not complete yet because it's you need the net sort of formatting for this particular API URL. So follow, it's after your blocks here, you need to be placing a question mark followed by popular, followed by equal sign, followed by asterisk. And those, these are things, these are the formatting tools that we formatting uh, characters that we were using to make sure that your block that our API is in the correct format. And follow up by the next step is to make sure that we if there's some uh, what if there is an if the data is not fetched while it's still loading you need to just return a certain uh, condition where it when it's loading so we just not going to say loading like this so that we have to we don't actually uh, do anything while it still loads we're just going to be waiting until it loads like this and while and while it has an if there, if there's an error it's just going to be making sure the error is actually outputted errors actually output inside the uh, just going to say return error so in this case let's say uh, like this and let's want to also like make sure that the, the data that's being fetched here also need to be uh, shown so let's use console log and this console log is going to be placing data here and in this case this is how I able to uh, this is how I, we are able to fetch this data let's click save and let's go to our app uh, here this case here so as you can see here there's an error that has occurred so there's so sorry there's no uh, error here so all you do just need to go to our console here as you can see there's some error here so you can see url is not defined so let's go back to our url inside our our use fetch here as you can see url here is not defined and there's a reason for it because you need to be making sure that you are actually placing it inside this url here to be placed it inside use our use fetch use fetch function here that's what we'll be receiving so as a as a parameter let's click save so once you have clicked save, as you can see here, now you are able to see your data actually being saved. And inside our console log that we have already opened, as you can see, you also can see some data that's being displayed as well. As you can see here, there's some ID here, and then there's some length here. And this is, as you can see, this is blog dot title that has been uh, once one the thing has been uh, showing here. So that's what we'll be doing, right? That's what we have already gathered. So it's actually working. That's because we're actually getting all this data coming from uh, blog. Uh, CMS, I mean, strappy CMS here. This ID with two here, and basically that's that's the first step here. All you have to do just we are able, once we are able to fetch this particular data that's being in, shown inside console log, then we are able to good to go to the next step.